Hello, I'm Dr. M. Welcome to VMC. Today we are going to cover a little bit about cat nutrition specifically because there are so many myths and misconceptions that get spread around and so let's go delve into what research actually tells us. Join me, you'll learn something. The first misconception to cover is uh, the fact that people get confused about what an obligate carnivore is and what that means for the nutrition that our cats need. People seem to think that an obligate carnivore means that cats must only eat meat and they can't digest or eat anything else. And this isn't true. Uh, we have research indicating that cats are able to digest carbs and that it's perfectly okay for them to get energy from those sources. The thing is though, because they are obligate carnivores, what that means is that at least some of their diet must be animal flesh so they cannot be fed as vegetarian. Trying to feed a cat as a vegetarian would be considered animal cruelty and you can't do that. Their body needs the taurine, arachidonic acid and a few other things from the meat that they ingest as their body is unable to produce those things on its own. Omnivores and herbivores are able to produce those sorts of things on their own, therefore they don't need to eat meat, but the cat cannot do that, so they need at least some meat, but that doesn't mean they can't digest carb sources as well. Second, I hear all the time that feeding kibble is bad for cats. And when you ask people why, sometimes they say, oh, uh, cats that eat kibble are fat or they develop diabetes. So when looking into the research studies about obesity and its relationship to, to diabetes in cats, there is nothing showing that kibble in the cat's diet is a risk factor for these issues. Now, what the studies have told us is that feeding a WSAVA compliant diet does matter. We need to have those research studies proving the bioavailability of the micronutrients to make sure that the cats are getting what they need from their diet. What did matter was the amount of food that was fed, the number of meals that was fed, the micronutrient um, makeup of the food and the caloric density of the food. If you are feeding diets that are less calorically dense, then the cat can have more volume to feel more full, but not eat as many calories. And so if you feed more frequent meals through the day, the better that seems to be for them, for their digestive tract, for their health. This is one of the reasons in my cat enrichment video we do discuss food puzzles so much because that is a great way for cats to be able to have access to kibble all throughout the day so that they can graze and have, you know, six, eight or however many small meals they are wanting in each day and they can go and hunt the food puzzle down um, get their food, have that behavioral fulfillment as long as it's not a frustrating puzzle for them, have their small meal and then move on to their next nap as cats are tending to do. Uh, and so feeding kibble on its own is not a negative thing for our cats. We just need to be aware of all of the factors that play into this and choose the nutrition they are eating carefully. Cats are individuals and they might do better with only kibble if you have a cat that doesn't like canned food, say, or there are going to be some cats that are going to do a bit better with only canned food. The trouble with feeding only canned is because it's better to feed so very many meals for cats in a day, that can really be a struggle for people who are working or out of the house for a large portion of the day, and then the canned food just doesn't stay fresh and you can't really feed you know, the many small meals like you can with kibble in food puzzles. But it should be noted that, of course, canned food does have a higher moisture content than kibble does. And that additional water in the canned food for some cats can really help them to feel more satiated and that can help with weight loss if they are um, feeling full from water which has no calories compared to needing more kibble which will be more calorie dense. 
I already have a video on healthy feline weight loss. I'll link it here and it will also be in the video description below. It's also important to note that the research shows us that kibble does not cause diabetes. However, it should be noted that once a cat has been diagnosed as diabetic, switching to a diet that is lower in carbohydrates may improve their chances of going into remission from that diabetes. So the carbs don't cause the diabetes, but eating a lower carb diet may help to manage diabetes for our cats. Now the thing that the studies did show was that Diets that are lower in carbs often tend to be higher in fats. And for some cats that can cause weight gain. And so we have to be careful that if we do have a diabetic cat that we are trying to get to eat a lower carb diet that we do watch their body weight and their body condition score as we don't want that increase in fat to cause weight gain. Another thing that I will hear from people when discussing kibble and cats is that kibble is bad because then the cats aren't getting enough water and therefore they are at more risk for developing bladder issues like feline idiopathic cystitis and or chronic kidney problems. And again, the research just doesn't show this. Um, there were some studies that were done that had cats eating canned foods versus eating kibble and their urine concentration was not significantly different. So if cats get more water from their food, it seems most likely that then they just drink less water and so their urine stays as concentrated as if they eat kibble and then they drink a bit more water along with that kibble and end up with the same sort of urine concentration at the end of the day. What does really matter is that we provide our cats with enough appropriate water resources. And so they do need a few of these spread throughout the house. They must be glass or ceramic or stainless steel. And some cats do also have a preference for a wider, more shallow bowl so that they can have their back to the wall and still kind of watch the environment as they drink to help them feel safe. And some cats also don't seem to enjoy the feeling of their vibrisse, their whiskers touching the edges of containers. So having a wide and shallow bowl can be helpful for these cats. And then at least one of the water sources needs to be a running water source. And so this means a fountain of some sort. We do have some research showing that cats do tend to drink more if they have access to flowing water. All water sources must be cleaned out and replaced at least once every single day. What we do know from the research is that the mineral content of the diet and the protein level in the diet did influence thirst. So those things do matter. And so that's why, especially for the prescription diets that are designed for cats that have bladder issues, they will have different mineral content in them in order to encourage drinking and more frequent urination in order to avoid the bladder more often, which seems to be helpful in reducing things like bladder pain for cats that have cystitis. Kibble on its own is not likely to slow down dental disease, but there are some formulas that are designed to slow down dental disease. And so feeding those to healthy cats um, as the kibble portion of their daily calories can be quite helpful. I have done a video on dental disease prevention and slowing down the formation of dental disease. I'll link it in the doobly-doo below. So at this point, the big takeaway is that for cats as a population, Feeding canned is not inherently better than feeding kibble, and kibble is not inherently better than feeding canned. Um, it's going to depend on the individual cat. So when you have a cat join your household, I strongly encourage you to present them with both canned food and kibble. This is because our cats do tend to form pretty strong texture preferences as they get older. And so if we have cats that are used to a variety of different textures, that can be very helpful so that as they age, 
as they develop more medical issues, then we have more options as far as prescription nutrition to treat those medical diseases as they occur. So for my personal cat, what I do is I offer a small canned meal in the morning and in the evening, and I use that canned food to help work on kennel training with my cat and help him to develop positive associations with spending time in his kennel and having it be a good thing. And then every morning and every evening, I load up his food puzzles and I place those in various areas around the house so that through the day and overnight he can have as many small meals of his kibble as he wishes until they're empty of course and so that way you can be measuring their food intake by measuring the volume of canned food that you're feeding and the volume of kibble that you're loading into the food puzzles but it still allows them to graze throughout the day as seems to be best for their GI tract. All this being said if you already have a cat that absolutely hates kibble or absolutely hates canned, I hear you. Cats and their texture preferences can be incredibly frustrating, so just do the best you can with what you've got. Offer as many meals throughout the day and throughout the night as you can, so long as it is a WSAVA compliant formula and it's suitable for what your individual cat's needs are, that's fantastic. Now do keep in mind that if medical issues arise in the future, your veterinarian may recommend prescription diets to help manage those diseases. I post a new video most Fridays, so I hope you'll join me next week and uh, thank you for watching this video. You take care and bye.